and many other issues confronting them. There is, in fact, a fair funding review taking place and there are supposedly studies being made into local council's needs. I would encourage the cabinet member to take part in any representations that can be made to SIGOMA and the LGA to secure funds and ask her if she might comment on the leaders column in Wirral View. I did in fact read Wirral View. When the leader said, on one side are those calling for the books to be balanced by leaving some of the most needy to be left to sink or swim, at the other end of the spectrum are those plotting a showdown with central government. Whichever course uh, the cabinet member recommends to us, I hope that you will agree that we need to secure as much funding for her as possible. Of course, I just, obviously I agree with that. Thank you for those comments. Um, the withdrawal of the revenue support grant is going to you know, hit we all massively and we really need to start generating income at pace in order for us to absorb that hit. So I agree that councils not like rural, Labour Northern councils particularly are being left to sink or swim, but this council will swim so, and we will be making representations and have them already regarding the fair funding review, we already have submissive representation. It's worth noting, of course, that we did have a notice of motion that go through full council asking for fair funding for rural, and the group opposite voted against that. Councillor Chris Blake, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, question of cabinet members, jobs and growth. And uh, the Chief Executive of Subject Matter Report stated the resort will suppose 100 jobs immediately and up to 300 jobs in the near future. Can you confirm that these will be direct jobs at the hotel? And if so, how will a 90 bed hotel support 300 jobs? Because believe it or not, that's a ratio of 3 to 1. Councillor Anthony Davis. Um, the Celtic Manor Resort um, is, is a mixture of different things. I know we've heard a lot about golf tonight, um, but there's a uh, golf, a uh, hotel, a uh, conference centre, a spa. So, as well as um, the, the construction as well, there'll be needed people to work there, but also the supply chain as well. And I'm afraid that is time, members. So now we move on to item 8, which is members' questions. Members' general questions. Two questions have been received. Councillor Steve Williams to Councillor Anita Leach. Councillor Phil Gilchrist to Councillor Anita Leach. So first, Councillor Steve Williams, uh, do you wish to ask your question? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Question for a uh, cabinet member for the environment. Prior to 2014, the Merseyside Recycling and Waste Authority had accumulated £28.9 million in a sinking fund which was to support the £1.2 billion resource recovery contract. In January of that year, this was transferred into a waste development fund. In April 2014, the Waste Authority distributed this fund to each of the district and district councils. The world's share was £6.7 million. So far, only £1.6 million has been spent, leaving just over £5 million in the fund. Can the Cabinet Member state whether she has any idea of how and when this will be spent? If there are no projects planned, would she agree with me that this money would be of great benefit for a scheme that would increase Wirral's recycling rate, which is presently falling steadily, currently at 33.2%? Councillor Leach. Thank you for your question. Um, just in terms of the, the £1.6 million, pounds, yes, but we have spent that amount of money. In terms of the remaining, uh, remainder of, the, of that money, um, what we've actually been doing is waiting until we've got the government paper, which tells us what their direction is in terms of this. Waste um, is, and recycling is falling, and it's falling across all of the boroughs. And you will know from the committee that you sit on, that other, other councils have actually spent their money and their recycling rates still remain low. So I think that our officers have done the right thing in waiting for the government report to come out. I commend them for what they've done because once we know exactly what the government's line is, then we can spend that money appropriately. We only get it once and we'll spend it wisely. 
Councillor Gilchrist, you wish to ask your question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. In the autumn statement, the Chancellor of the Exchequer <coughs> promised that the government will provide 10 million funding between 2019-20 and 2022-3 for local community street trees and urban trees. In view of the limited <laughs> funds for the replacement of roadside trees in Wirral and the clear environmental improvements to air quality that trees bring, will Wirral Council grasp this opportunity? <laughs> Councillor Leach. Buy some chainsaws, you're running out. Um, thank you for your question. Um, obviously, uh, if there are funds available, which we know there are, then we will grasp every opportunity to use those funds wisely within the world. Why don't you keep the trees to We now move on to item 9, matters referred from overview and scrutiny committees or other council committees. Councillor, we turn to item 9 on pages 61 to 68, that's 61 to 68 of the agenda, which includes a recommendation from Adult Care and Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee, calling of a decision taken by the Joint Strategic Commission Board, 27th of November 2018. Firstly, item 9 on page 61 of the main agenda. The minutes are contained within pages 1 to 8 of the agenda supplements. A Liberal Democrat motion has been submitted and is available on page 1 of the agenda supplements. Much for all the, much for all the yes, yes Mayor. Mayor. No. Can, I, can I ask for clarification of the, the legal aspect of the Liberals being able to at, um, put up a motion in when this is uh, indeed scrutiny? And what would not react uh, scrutiny of the fact that a motion has been put in? Members, this is, as you say, full council uh, fulfilling the function of the scrutiny committee uh, with the report here for the chair to present the reason for referring this to full council. Um, however, some of the uh, council's normal rules apply in terms of submitting motions, and there is indeed been advanced warning, as it were, of a motion. That motion lies before you. Um, and in the way that it's drafted, will be given precedence in the debate. That, of course, doesn't mean members have to vote for it. Members can vote against it, uh, and if it falls, there is currently no other motion lying before council for debate, and therefore will be open to the floor uh, to put forward any replacement motion. I now invite Councillor Julia McManus, Chair of the Adult Care and Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee, to explain the recommendation from the committee. You have up to five minutes to address the Council. Councillor McManus. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The Adult Care and Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee welcomes the opportunity for robust scrutiny and that the health care and commissioning pooled fund arrangements are referred to Council because the committee does have the following concerns. The Cabinet Committee needs to review and reconsider the developing and proposed contract with Wirral CCG to ensure that the Council retains control of its statutory duties. The Council's budgetary position is protected. In view of the substantial funds pooled and managed by the new organisation, further channels of communication need to be developed with the Adult Overview and Scrutiny Committee so that they might have more insight to make more meaningful contributions to the oversight of that body. <coughs> Similar parallel arrangements be made for children and families overview scrutiny committee and in addition work on the preparation of the system sustainability plan shall be placed before members at the earliest opportunity. Thank you Mr Mayor. Councillor Chris Jones, Cabinet Member for Adult Health and Care, you can respond for up to five minutes to provide information on the original decision made by the JSCB. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, as the, the Cabinet Member for Adult Health and Care, it's my job to ensure that we have the best possible services for our most vulnerable residents. And this Section 75 is all about providing the very best care and support for people. I won't go over all the arguments that came out of the calling, as I'm sure you have all have read the minutes or watched the um, streaming, even if you weren't able to, to be there. 
The Council does retain its statutory duties through the Director of Care and Health and, and myself, and I'd like to assure the Council of that. Pooling budgets for the CCG is about providing better services as demand grows and funding decreases. It's about not having people waiting on trolleys for hours in a &E. It's about freeing beds up at the hospital for people who need them, because we all know that hospital is not the best place to be when we no longer need medical care. It's about providing support to people in their own homes, preventing hospital admissions as far as possible. And it's also about providing the services needed to get those people out. It's about letting people tell their story once, instead of multiple times to different services. And it's about making the will pound go further and getting rid of duplication.